Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. Today I'm going to be talking about conscious communication. Now, all of us are in relationships, whether they're romantic relationships, friend and social relationships, or work relationships, or even virtual relationships. We all have them, or family relationships, and they're the best ones. They're the most juicy relationships to do this kind of stuff with. So communication is something we do. It's something that comes from who we're being. Um, we, we do it both with our bodies, um, with our physicality, we do it with our energy and um, the tone of our voice and our interest, um, and we do it through the words that we say. But the words that we say are not always heard. And the reason for that is whatever emotion, whatever energy is going on behind them, we, we project that onto the other person. And quite often, depending on what state we're at when we're communicating, they might respond to the energy rather than the words that we're saying. This is particularly noticeable when you're having an argument with somebody and you're trying to say something but you are over emotional and what they're picking up on is the agitation in you rather than the words that you're saying. So the first step of conscious communication is to be very mindful of the space that you're communicating from, who you're being when you're communicating. Um, if you're feeling agitated, angry, sad, over-emotional in any way, go and deal with that emotion. And I'm not going to go too much into depth about how to deal with that emotion today, but I'll put a link to um, when I've spoken about it before. And if you're interested, you can go into that and have a look on how to do that um, in your own time. So the first step is to, to make sure that you're in the right emotional space, that you're in a neutral space, and preferably, if you can, that you're coming from a space of love and connection and compassion. The next thing is to own what you're saying, because quite often we blame somebody else for what is going on in, in the world. We blame them for our experience of the world. We blame them for the fact that we're angry, that we're sad, we're disappointed, that we're upset. It's their fault that we're feeling the feelings we're feeling. But, but that's not true. That really is not true. Because the feelings you're feeling are from your old thoughts, your old beliefs, your old systems. Um, they're pains and hurts and wounds that you're holding inside of yourself. And that person has just touched on them and triggered them. So you need to own that. And own it in the words that you say. And you can use something and please adapt them to what I'm going to share with you to, to make it comfortable for yourself to say. But it needs to be something that you own. So say for instance someone said something to me and it's triggered me and I'm feeling hurt and angry. What you can say is when you say that I feel. And then you can share what you feel. What you could also say is, when you say that, the story I tell myself is, the story I tell myself is that you don't love me, if it's um, a partner. The story I tell myself is that you don't respect me. Um, and I've no idea what the story is that you tell yourself about whatever it is that's happening. But you own that story, it's your story. You created that story. The, per the other person is not responsible for that story. But if you're trying to co-create a new reality together, if you're trying to create a working relationship or a relationship, of, um, a romantic relationship, or if you're even just trying to create um, a loving relationship with your family, then you need to do that together. And for that, they need to understand the story that you tell yourself. But you own that story. It's your story. And then what you can ask them is, for us to, to create whatever it is that you want to create, what needs to happen? And bring them into that discussion. Um, because you can't make someone stop being who they are, but you can change who you are. And you can change that by, by together taking responsibility for what's happened and changing both of your behaviours and your patterns, should they want to engage that with you, going forwards. Sometimes, just even understanding the story you tell yourself when something happens is enough to shift and change how you see things. 
it's enough to, to, to enable you to realise that the story is just a story, it is not the truth. I hope this has helped you a little bit and I'll just quickly recap on the steps that you need to take when you're consciously communicating. So the first step is to make sure that you're coming from as neutral a space as possible and preferably a loving space. So make sure that you de-energise or de de-emotionalize yourself before you enter into a conversation. Second of all, it's to own what is going on inside of yourself, to own the stories, to own the perspective that you have on what has happened. It's yours, it's not them, own your triggers. The third step as well is if they are particularly in an emotional state, is to realize that that is theirs as well. You do not need to buy into their anger, their hurt. They will want you to, because it's a dance you've most likely done over a long time, not maybe even with them, but with other people. So if someone comes, and I I'm, I'm, tend to be highly triggered by anger, so if someone comes to me and they're very, very angry, I immediately get defensive. But I've learnt that their anger, they have a right to be angry because it's what they're experiencing. But I don't have to take responsibility for their anger. I am not responsible for how they're feeling. I am not responsible for their anger. And I don't always get it right, <laughs> but more and more so, it's, it's going in the right direction. I'm able to stand in a loving space and to say to them, I love you. I love you. I can see that you're hurting. I can see that you're angry. What do you need from me right now? And sometimes they don't need anything. Sometimes they just need to offload. And it's to be in that space of listening, deep, deep listening. Not listening to answer, to combat, to put in a quick quip. It's listening from understanding. Understanding where their pain is coming from. That can de-energise, de de-emotionalise what is going on. So I've given you three things you can start to do to help with conscious communication. And I hope that they will be of help to you because communicating is such a big part of our lives. In every relationship we have. If you've liked this, I really appreciate your likes, your subscriptions, your comments, your interaction and your sharing. If you want to know more from me, I have shared some links in the notes below. So much love from me to you and I'll see you again next week. Bye bye.